Andermani Mahama on Tuesday hosted a meeting of heads of state and government on the establishment of the South to South Energy Initiative. The meeting, which was held in New York and one of uh, uh, the many president, uh, one of which the many president participated, was organized under the auspices of the United Nations with President Mahama as the key champion addressing journalists after the closed session. Foreign Affairs Minister Hannah Tete explained the initiative and Ghana's role. It's actually a new program. There have been discussions within the UN for a while about how best the countries of the global south, who are oil and gas producers, could get together and support each other with advisory services, with technical services, all with a view to helping them to better manage and exploit their oil and gas resources. So in this particular instance, Ghana is acting, if you like, as the promoter of the organization because it is yet to be established. The presentation that was done essentially described the steps that need to be taken in order for this organization to be able to start. We would require at least 12 founding members, but more importantly, we would require at least four members who are from different regions of the Global South. It is a Southern, Global Southern Initiative. And the idea is that once we have been able to get the number of founding members, a committee would be established and the first conference would be held with a view to now defining the role of the organization in much more detail. So some of the comments from the other countries were very supportive, but also were an indication of how they would like this organization to grow and develop, and how they think that we would benefit from the experience sharing, and how that would also help us to build capacity. A number of the matters that were raised were, for instance, this whole issue of being able to put together proper project proposals, to do evaluation and assessment, to be able to put together good programs and proposals and initiatives that would attract financing, to be able to help with the financial advisory services, to be able to get those projects that we find to be critical funded so that they can actually be executed and implemented. Well, let's remain in New York a little while longer because uh, President John Mahama also on Tuesday made a strong case for multinational companies to consciously add value and process Africa's raw materials on the continent to create sustainable jobs. He was speaking during a panel discussion on employment, decent work for inclusive development organized by the International Labour Organization in New York. Other panelists were the Chilean president, uh, Mrs. Michelle Bachelet, and president of Costa Rica, Luis Guillermo Suárez, and the director, of, director general of the International Labour Organization, Guy Ryder, and the chairman of the CEO, uh, chairman and CEO of the Coca-Cola company, uh, Mukta Kent. If you uh, talk about reducing poverty, you talk about reducing malnutrition, it means getting people jobs so they can earn an income and be able to uh, feed themselves and their families. So it was implied in the first MDGs, but I think that in the second MDG, we must target and focus on job creation. For us in Africa, particularly, it's the fastest growing continent, and that's an advantage because it gives us more uh, labor if it's still, but it's also a time when we have a lot of young people coming out of school who cannot find work, then the devil will find work for either. Um, we must uh, add value to the various products that we produce before we export them so that then we can create more jobs because growth rates are slowing down in the developed world and they are increasing in the developing world. And so some of the processes and value addition must shift so that we can guarantee jobs, encouraging more young people to become entrepreneurs. Um, I mean, letting them come out of school and believe in themselves that they can also create a business and employ people is something that we need to promote. The second problem is coming from a state enterprise model to a private sector model. We started with a socialist system where everything was state owned. We're now moving to the private sector. Unfortunately, the private sector is not growing as fast, and so as we're shedding labor from the public sector, the private sector is not able to absorb you know that's uh, excess labor. The third issue is 
basic information about what jobs are available. And we're trying to solve that in a new digital market information system where young graduates and young people can go online and see what jobs are available and see what kinds of skills training they need to be able to take. Hello again. You're still watching Joy News, and of course, this is still news today. Now, the Associate Director at the Center for Regional Integration in Africa and Senior Research Fellow at the Legon Center for International Affairs and Diplomacy, Dr. Vlad Menchidan, so is questioning Accra to do an extensive preparatory work before heading into the arbitration proceedings with Yamusukro. Well, Dr. Vlad Menchidan, so uh, senior fellow at Lesia joins me on the line. Doc, thank you very much for joining us. But uh, listening to welcome. listening to the Attorney General, uh, Minister for Justice, yesterday at a press conference, one thing is clear that Ghana is not looking at a situation where this youth would, would bring any sort of rivalry. You're asking them to take your time, be cautious, and, and do things right before going in. What, what should be the posturing of the Ghanaian government? Pay your advice. Well, this is an arbitration, you know, so we are not expecting that kind of adjudication kind of uh, uh, settlement. Mm. So it's an arbitration, and this is not the first time. Uh, in international politics, we do it quite often. It's better than going to war or misunderstanding each other to the extent that you exacerbate the situation. Mm. What is going to happen or what is happening, uh, it's not anything that should bring about panic mm. in the Ghanaian body politics. I think she's right in saying that is uh, confident we have all the necessary tools to be able to prosecute our case properly before the panel. Uh, what I was warning about is the very fact that there are some nuances in politics and we've got to take those things into consideration. I was cautioning because of the genesis of the whole thing. I was saying, why did Ivory Coast, for example, not raise the flags as soon as, as, soon as uh, we started prospecting in the area? Mm. Uh, they give indications somewhere, I think, in 2007, lowered the guard never came on board again. As soon as one government went and the other came on board, that is Babu's government, which largely uh, was perceived as having support from Ghana, created that kind of uh, uh, animosity, call it, if you want it, between Ghana and mm. the Ivory Coast. It has been properly handled on a diplomatic uh, level, but then defeated under this is the very fact of how the Ivory Coast approached the problem. Um, they started uh, writing individual letters to prospecting companies in the area, one, uh, which, is, which is not, 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 not uh, it's very unusual because they should have contacted Ghana on the issue. The second thing they did was to now come to Ghana um, on the issue. And those who, who were privy to what, what happened would tell you that they came with one thing in mind, a uh, belligerent position uh, without any, any uh, with several conditions, kind of. Mm. So since then, when we started meeting with them 10 times, the Attorney General tells us, we have not been getting any headway, which means they are not prepared, and they feel that um, they're right. Okay. Nobody in international politics does this without knowing that it's coming from a position of strength. Mm. And I was warning that there is a possibility of that being backed by some big powers, knowing what oil is. And, and these big powers, uh, not, not you alone, but the other, uh, you know, international relations experts that have raised this concern include France and the United States, uh, you sure, know, and the claims sure. are that they are backing Cote d'Ivoire in this matter. But should that yeah. be a worry to Accra or the Flagstaff it House? It really, it really, really should. It really should, because these are the people who can make and make. These are the people, the international system, the global kind of governance is such that uh, if you wield power in the international regime, mm. Uh, then, then uh, you, you have your say. And so let us assume that this uh, um, panel, uh, made up of whoever, uh, are influenced by these powers that have, vest, have, that have a vested interest in the uh, case. Mm. What do you do? That's what I was warning, that let us do our homework very well. Let us know the interests of the parties involved, because in any kind of conflict, there are relationships within the interest, uh, around the interested parties. Mm. And that was what I was warning from the, from the point of view of the theories that we know. Do, do, in this case, we suspect that France would necessarily back the Ivory Coast. And the treatment we give to Cosmos and Vodafone mm. within the time that uh, the new government came to power, I mean the NDC, if it's indicative of anything, it is, this, is the, this is the time we need, we need to watch that. Remember how the Cosmos case traveled, remember how the Vodafone case traveled, remember how the British High Commissioner then warned Ghana, 
Remember how a very prominent politician in the Ghanaian society was denied a visa to the United States. Bring that all out and the perception that this government was supporting Gbagbo and note that mm. when you're going to deal with the Ivory Coast, these are notable variables that you need to understand before you go in. That's what I was warning. Okay, now talk about the U.S. and France. You remember that there was this rift between the two countries some uh, few years ago over uh, y Yamoussoukro, you know, alleging that Accra is harboring ex-Ivorian fighters. Now, won't this further strain relations between Ghana and, and Ivory Coast and even our international partners, France and U.S. for that matter? No, absolutely not, if you know how to handle the whole situation. Because all you need to do is to remove these variables from being part of the deliberations that we are going to have. Uh, show that, and I'm very happy that our president, in his last meeting with the uh, Aboran president, uh, spoke very well. I mean, spoke very well without mentioning any of these things that are triggered. And I strongly suspect that if we are able to uh, take the issues without these variables, we wouldn't have any strain of relationship. I mean, it's normal that Britain and France at times quarrel. Mm. Uh, France and the uh, uh, U.S., uh, Italy and U.S., uh, Britain and U.S. even have their own quarrels. Germany and U.S. quite recently had quarrels over the tapping of food, etc. These are skirmishes within the international system where national interest is concerned. So I don't think this is going to strain the relationship beyond uh, the normal strains that we have in terms of security dilemmas. Very well. Dr. Vlad Mankri, so I would want to thank you very much for being a part of the welcome. show. You have a great afternoon. Vlad Mankri, so speaking to us here on news today. Now, let's do some business because the National Insurance Commission has served notice. It will, from October 2014, start arresting and prosecuting owners of private commercial buildings who fail to insure their buildings uh, uh, as per Section 183 and 184 of the Insurance Act 724, which makes it compulsory for private commercial buildings, including those under construction to be insured. Deputy Commissioner of Insurance, Simon Nero Kojo uh, Davo, noted the violation of the law had resulted in the collapse of buildings uh, recently. And according to him, the commission had formed a task force which has zoned Accra and will soon begin arresting owners of private commercial properties without the requisite insurance policy. Simon Nero Kojo Davo implored on, pub, on the public to lodge complaints with the Commission or Ghana Insurance Association to redress on all issues with regards to insurance. Hello again. Now in sports, Ghana will have not uh, a permanent uh, coach for the upcoming 2015 Africa Cup of Nations ties against Guinea. Kosiapia left as coach earlier this month and application for the job closed on 19 September this year. And of course, uh, the Ghana Football Association Executive Committee member Fred Papo had said that there will be an interim boss in place instead. The Black Stars are due to play Guinea on October 10 in Morocco before hosting the same side five days later. The Sili uh, National are having to pay, uh, play their home 2015 Nations Cup qualifiers outside Guinea because of the outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus in the country. A member of the Ghana Football Association Executive Committee, Winfred uh, Osei, has exclusively revealed to Joy Sports. Local coaches have been ruled out of the search for substantive Black Stars coach following the sacking of Coach Kwasiapia. Ex-Black Star player Kim Grant leads the charge for local coaches, but Wilfred Osei says the fundamental U UEFA uh, Pro Lines requirement has given the expatriate coaches the upper hand. It's, it's difficult to tell. We are Do now, you they, have in mind? They are now shortlisting. So to be very naive on my part to stand here and uh, advocate for anyone. But definitely from the way it's looking, it's going to be an expatriate coach. Because if you request for UEFA Pro license, definitely our local coaches haven't got. Oh, people, I don't know where everybody is pointing. No, I'm only asking. To, uh, Milo. Do you know that I didn't mention the, the, yeah, there will be the need for us to look at the financial demands of all those who are applying for the job? Somebody may be suitable, but if Milo decides to take something way above our budget, I don't think the FA can support it. We have a budget to run, 
and whoever will hire to run the affairs of blasters will have to fall within that budget. For you know, financial considerations may take out the, your, 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 your preferred candidate. I don't have one. Another person could be preferred. I have my, my issues with Milo, but the national interest reigns supreme. Come on, let me. And two more local stories and Sports Minister Mahama Yariga has confirmed Ghana will tender in her bid to host the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations before CAF's September 30 deadline elapses. Seven days is all the committee put in together Ghana's bid half well. But Sports Minister Mahama Yariga is confident they will meet the deadline. We're working at finalizing our documents and so we're looking good in terms of meeting the deadline. Busy working at finalizing our documents, and so we're looking good in terms of meeting the deadline. I've received uh, assurances from the bid committee. They held a meeting uh, last this weekend, actually, uh, the, the last weekend, and um, the experts who are working on the bid are busy doing their work. The fortune we have is that because we recently hosted it, we still have quite some, you know, documentation and idea as to how this is done. Uh, what we need really is to update our information. The primary information is available, just updating it in terms of increased number of hotel rooms, increased infrastructure regarding transportation, the expansions to our airport since 2008, and uh, the expansions in the telecommunication industry and our media and, and all that. So we really just updating the information for our bid. The team that put together the information the last time are the same team that we have recruited to put together this uh, present uh, bid. So they, 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 they know their job and they're doing it well. What you make about it? But if you're excited that uh, Ghana is uh, actually championing to bid for the Africa Cup of Nations, uh, to host the Africa Cup of Nations in 2014, check this, because Algeria have emerged favorites following CAF's earlier decision to hand the competition to the Northern Africans following Libya's withdrawal. However, sports minister has downplayed any such advantage. I mean, the main claim of, I believe, the Algerians and, and North, North Africans is simply that uh, Libya was supposed to host it and Libya is a North African country, so if it's not going to Libya, it should come to another North African country. Uh, I don't think that 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 is a very strong reason why it should go to any North African country. I think basically it's a question about the infrastructure that you have. If they have it, then they are real competitors. Um, it's the skills and, 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 and track record of being able to organize it well. If they also have it, then they are a real threat to us. If they don't have all that, then we, we stand very tall among the comp competitors. But we have the infrastructure. We have a track record of doing it very well. And I keep telling people that beyond all that, for me, the strongest point is that we have a nation of people who are very hospitable and who love football and will do anything to ensure that they achieve success in, in organizing any football tournament. That's that for me our richest you know, and strongest uh, point.